Hello and welcome to the Synopsys Optical Solutions Group training series. In this video we will show how to use polarization and birefringence to model a double gland Taylor polarizer. Gland Taylor polarizers use two properly aligned birefringent calcite crystals to cause the ordinary light to TIR at air gaps and extraordinary light to pass through. Double gland Taylor polarizers use a third crystal to achieve linear polarization with extinction ratios over 100,000 to 1. At the onset, our model contains an unpolarized laser source with a 0.5 degrees sigma Gaussian divergence, three prisms separated by air gaps, and two receivers, one at the prism input and one at the prism output. The prism surfaces are perfectly polished using a smooth optical optical property type with Fresnel loss enabled. Initially, the prisms are made of shot NBK7. A simple ray trace reveals the primary path that light takes through the system. In order to model the gland Taylor, two major changes need to be made to the model. First, the prisms need to be made of properly oriented calcite, and second, polarization ray tracing needs to be enabled. A calcite user material has already been added to this model. Calcite is a uniaxial material which has ordinary and extraordinary refractive indices as a function of wavelength. When an anisotropic material is assigned to a solid, a material orientation tab appears in the property dialog box and a set of coordinate axes are drawn in the 3D view. In our case, the crystal axis needs to be orthogonal to the prism axis, so we set alpha equal to 90 degrees for all three crystals. Finally, we need to enable the polarization ray trace in order to see the correct results. This setting is available in the system area of the general preferences. The extinction of this system should be at least 100,000 to 1, so we need to ensure that the relative ray power threshold is set below that value to allow rays to propagate. We chose 1 e to the minus 10th for this analysis. Now, if we rerun the simulation, we can see that some light now TARs at both air gaps. If we look at the intensity distribution leaving the polarizer, we can see the primary beam and if we view the chart with a logarithmic value axis, we can see a secondary beam. The peak of the primary beam is about 785 watts per steradian and the peak of the secondary beam is about 1.6 milliwatts per steradian which is about 500,000 to 1 extinction. Now let's verify the polarization of the beam. If we open the intensity polarization chart for the output receiver, you can see that the primary beam is strongly linearly polarized in the vertical orientation, and the secondary beam has an orthogonal polarization state. In this video, we have demonstrated how to set up a double gland Taylor polarizer in light tools using polarization and birefringence. If you have any questions or need technical support, please contact us at lighttools underscore support at synopsis.com. Thank you for watching.